Y'all, I absolutely cannot believe how... Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. So today's video is all about voles, moles, snakes, different underground pests that are such a problem for our garden. Well, if you're new to our channel, we moved to this property last October. So this is our first gardening seasoning at this property. Now we only moved two hours south. However, what we are quickly noticing is we're in a whole new world of pests around here for our garden. So we immediately planted out um, in our area in-ground gardening because we don't know where everything permanently is gonna be. So we wanna do a lot of in-ground gardening just to fill out the soil, fill out the, the elements, where's our heavy water spots, uh, what's the pest issues, before we did any more permanent kind of bedding besides our kitchen garden. So that is showing itself really quickly. We planted 70 tomato plants um, and you're about to see this because we're about to go out there. And like literally like within a week, I noticed that I was starting to have some branches of my tomato plants laying on the ground, just completely cut. Like you took a pair of scissors and just clipped them. Then it got to the point to where they were eating these and they were clipping them down, down to the stem. And I only had like three, well, only like three or four had been eaten, but I knew it was a problem. One even cut my daggone zinnia off. And if y'all know me, I know I love my zinnia. So then it became war. So I did some research and some Googling on what this may have been. The highest likelihood is a vole that is causing this issue. At least something underground that's cutting it up. It's not tomato hornworms. We just put these in the ground. It's a brand new area. I've been doing the searching. It is not hornworm time just yet. Um, it does look like it because of how they're eating it down, but the perfect just slicing um, is what makes it a little bit different than a hornworm who will eat your tomato plant up in a heartbeat. Oh. We've got plants everywhere. We got to get to doing some salad or planting or something. Um, but it's early, late, latest spring. It's like mid-May when we're doing this video. Um, and so we have the greenhouse popping with all kinds of things. We have our cool crops in there. We got cauliflower. Let me show you that real quick. So we've been harvesting our broccoli that you see here. We have another one that, that one's like, that was weird. We have another one that's ready right there. Um, and then look at this cauliflower. Isn't that beautiful? We got some purple and orange ones down here too, and I'm super excited about it, but they're basically ready to harvest. One thing to note in here, no butt damage. So that's been real nice. All right, back to the pest issues. So the biggest issue with voles, moles, snakes, funny enough, we have crawdids that are in the garden. We have a creek that is right on the other side of that tree line is also where our garden is in this area on this side of things. So, he wasn't a huge surprise to see, but he was also a huge surprise to see. Now, crawdads, crawdids, crawfish, crayfish, whatever you call it, um, they won't bother your garden a whole lot. However, they're kind of like a mole in a vole too. They will just clip. But the worst case that these animals and these pests do, these rodents, is where they're underground, they can mess up your root system. So if you're doing in-ground gardening, like we are here, and you have a vole hole, or a mole or crawdads that are underneath the ground right there, they can be disturbing your root system. And that's gonna cause your plants to die from the inside out because that is their life. That is where they live from. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Look, can y'all see them? See them tomatoes? Down to the bare stem, nothing left. That's a vole. And you see that little hole? Right there under, right beside the tomatoes that are being ate. That is the vole's home. And then now voles, they can make tunnels all under your ground and just cause havoc, but you can tell that's an active one. And it makes sense because right here are the ones that he's getting. You see I only have two zinnias over here now because he completely chopped that one up. I had to pick it up, it was just completely dead. But he hasn't bothered all of the other tomatoes. So basically, he's starting close to home and he's working himself down my line of tomatoes. And that ain't okay. So there are a lot of different techniques that you can use um, to try to repel these underground rodents away from your home. Like there's another hole. There's another one. They're, they're everywhere, everywhere here. They own it. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. Live traps. You can strictly just do actual mouse traps, rat traps to try to get them out. Hi, Mr. B, good seeing you. There's organic repellents you can put down. Bowls hate garlic smell, so you could plant garlic in that area or uh, sprinkle some garlic down. They also can't stand castor oil. Um, that's something that you can put in the area. 
but we're gonna try something a little bit different that has mixed reviews. And this video is gonna tell you if it works or not. We are gonna try some solar power rodent repellers. What this thing is, is a solar powered, so you see it on top, you got your solar set up, and it sends off sonic vibrating waves underneath the ground. Because the one thing that they don't like, oh, there's a cat on my trailer, what do you One thing that really gets on moles, voles, snakes, etc., is nerves, are vibrations. They don't like underground being all crazy and having loud noises and all that good stuff. That gets them out of that area. So, when you just listen to the basics, it's like these should be just fine. They should work great. Well, a lot of people have different opinions on it. Um, I don't know if they work or not. This will be the first time, and I promise I'm gonna wait. This video is gonna span a few weeks, um, so you actually get to see what the effects are here. Um, so we're gonna give them a try. This brand is Nikand, N-I-K-A-N-D. Come in a four pack. They weren't super cheap. I think they were like 20 or 30 bucks for a four pack, so they better do something. I got two of them. Um, so I have a total of eight. They're supposed to cover, I think about 90 foot um, of vibrations in each one of our in-ground beds here, 100 foot, so that's pretty good. I don't believe that it's gonna be that great, so I'm probably gonna put three per row, um, especially with the tomatoes here, and see how that goes. Um, and we'll just cross our fingers and see what happens. So let's get these open and let's get them in the ground. Okay, so I put two right here because that's a very active spot. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, you, the good thing is you can move them around. So I'm just putting two right there to see how it is. And then the other two out of that four pack, I just kind of did one down here in the middle and then one down there at the end. So you just saw um, that the sound it makes, it's like a buzzing sound. Um, so I can definitely see how that's vibrating the ground and that's cool says that at least get it eight inches into the ground. Obviously you can't use a hammer on it because you'll bust that little solar area, um, but you might have to like use a little hand digger. You might use a little hand digger to get it down a little bit more and then just kind of pile it out like you would plant a plant. Um, I might actually come back and do that so I can get them further down into the ground. However, they're all in there and now I'm going to replace the plants that they ate, put in new tomato plants, and we'll see if these bad boys work. All right, four in the tomato bed. Got three over in our flower bed and i got one over with our zucchini and squash y'all stay tuned let's see how these things do welcome to two weeks later y'all so we have gotten so much planted in the ground since the last time we talked um you'll see a garden video or garden tour video eventually on all the different stuff that we planted um, however we need to do a recap on the Sonic Ultrasound Vole Mole Snake Removers and if they worked. The verdict, they are working great. Every single tomato that we have has not had one bite off of it since we put these things in here. All, the only thing they've had removed is me actually clicking them off uh, for doing some pruning, but they look great. Y'all, I absolutely cannot believe how well these things are done. To be honest with you, I thought I was wasting my money and I didn't think it was gonna work at all. But I, here I am, completely wrong. They did great and I'm so happy that my tomatoes have not been chewed on. It's such a relief. 
So if you saw a lot of these videos here and there trying to figure out if they were worth it or not, I'm here to tell you from our experience, now everybody's garden and everybody's situation is always a little different. However, for us, perfect. I did want to note, because I'm not sure if I mentioned this a couple weeks ago when I first did the clips of this, um, I bought these ourselves. We bought them, nobody sent them to us. This was strictly our purchase. And I'm telling you what, I think it's the best purchase we might have ever made. Not even kidding. I'm so happy. This is gonna save a lot of things. And now I'm gonna buy a bunch more because I had them covered in the tomatoes. I had them covered over there in the squash. And I had them covered over here where our flowers are. Well, since then we've planted this row, we've planted this row, and we've planted the squash area and pumpkins and all that good stuff. And then we're gonna have the corn back there, which is underway. We're almost there, um, but we've gotten a lot done. Um, however, I want to get them in all of these because I don't want to start picking on anything else. And since they work so good, you best believe I'm getting more. So I hope this video was informative for you. I hope it helps you if you were on the fence and trying to figure out what kind of pest control you could do. Um, again, worked great. You can do a lot of different stuff though. You can use uh, this, not this. Um, I mentioned them earlier in the video. Uh, so castor oil is a big one that you can use, garlic, different stuff like that. Um, so probably still we'll plant some of that and get some of that stuff around, but our problem solved and I'm tickled to death. So y'all, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to down below. Um, we'll be bringing you a lot of more garden stuff. This is the first year we've ever gardened in this ground at this new house of ours. So I'm sure that is just the first of many new things that we're gonna have to try to conquer this year. So stay tuned. We love y'all until the next one. Bye.